Hello, Hello and welcome, welcome to Gag, Gag of, of the, the Millennial. Millennial, where me and Luxera chat about pop culture and spill the hot breakfast tea. <laughs> And in today's episode, we're going to talk about drama and cancel culture. Now, I feel like cancel culture is definitely a thing of our generation. Like, I feel like we have destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> We've somehow monetized and capitalized, like, getting rid of people. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think it's funny now. We're literally at a stage in the world where, like, we, as a society, get off and we'll literally do whatever we can to get money and to, to bring someone else down just to make us like, elevated. We absolutely have to talk about the biggest instance of cancel culture I have ever seen on the internet. Mm. And that, of course, is the big elephant in the room that everyone should know about, the James Charles Cross tatty drama. I have never in my life experienced, well, seen anything like that on the internet. Because you know last year what happened with, you know, Jeffree Star and Laura Lee and- Dramageddon. Yeah, Dramageddon last year with Manny MUA and all that stuff. And I feel like Gabe was more kind of skated under that because he kind of like redeemed himself a little bit. But like, I have never in my life seen anything go so insane on the internet the way that this did. Absolutely. But there were lots of people jumping on the bandwagon, I think. And that's something yeah. that we absolutely need to mention, perhaps a little bit later after we cover the, the basic juicy yeah. bits. Yeah. Because I have never seen so many people collectively move like from one person to another, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it was like James was losing as fast as Tat. It was like this weird sort of lever system. No, for sure, for sure, definitely. And the scary thing is about it is, although I think, you know, she was very convincing in what she was saying in her video, Tati was very, I think Tati definitely played on the, I I'm the mum of the internet. I've no, and I've never got involved before, so in this way it gives me leeway. But the stupid thing is, she got too confident with it, and instead of actually thinking about, oh shit, maybe there's something, like, like he might have something that might counteract this, she kind of just did it, and I thought like she just thinks she thought she could get away with everything. I don't know even if I would give her that much of the benefit of the doubt. I kind of feel like she started her video quite honestly. Yeah. I feel like she, you know, she had a little thing that she wanted to say. I don't think she ended up it be, meaning for it to be like a 41 minute, escapade about how <laughs> yeah, awful yeah. this child yeah. is. But it kind of ended up going that way. You could see like, as she started speaking, she became a bit more like boisterous and like, yeah, and then this, and this, and this. And then it's like, I think that she felt truly like she was doing the benefit of everyone. Yeah. And then perhaps, perhaps she didn't realize the scale it would kind of go to. Yeah. I mean, I don't think she could ever imagine she that it was totally gonna get like knew. 50 million views. She is a CEO and she also does uh, PR marketing for her own business. Yeah. Like she knows how to yeah. hit a brand. All yeah. of these people that are at the top of their game on YouTube know this because that's how you get huge. You become a marketing expert, essentially. Yeah. When she came up with her video and everyone went crazy, I was I was obviously a little bit more skeptical. Oh, absolutely. I, I have I've not experienced myself, but I've seen a lot of this stuff happen and I know what a lot of people like, instead of, you know, going on the bandwagon and just like jumping on it. I've, always, I've never been the kind of person that cancels people online. The thing is when he made his apology video and he didn't really address anything. Oh. That, he didn't address anything that she said. It almost like validated everything she was yeah, saying. Yeah, I kind of which, felt like that might have been the nail in the yeah, coffin of he his He should career. have just gone away and not, he panicked. And what he did, because he saw his subscribers going and him making that video made everything like 10 times worse. Absolutely. And he should have just waited and did his little event that he had the next day in Australia, did all that stuff and didn't come back with that apology video because it literally just made him look horrendous. I don't know how your opinion of James Charles is now. I mean, I, w I used to like him a while ago. I stopped liking him before any of this kind of happened anyway, just because I didn't like how he was online. I feel like he used, he definitely used his power to get what he wanted and not necessarily with boys. I mean, I, I don't know how all that stuff is, but um, he was very much, I didn't like the fact that he would quote tweet people who are just ignorant about things. And like his audience is obviously a little bit more insane than the most people, because they're very young. They're very much like very loyal. I think they're and very impressionable as would, well. The amount of times that he would tweet people or expose people, and then his audience would go and like completely bombard them. And like, you have millions of people yeah. following you. And this, so this is what made me dislike him for a while anyway. So it was kind of like over him. So Jeffree Star came out and said that he had all these receipts about oh, James Charles and yeah. saying that all this stuff happened. So, I think that there is stuff that Jeffrey has on James. I do think there is stuff because my theory about this is, I find it bizarre that anyone who says, I'm gonna show you receipts that would expose them. I have, you know, uh, voice clips. I have messages from, from people that would make James Charles look horrendous. Now, when he made that video, like the apology video, and he never came out and did it, 
James responded saying, thank you for doing that, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we can move on. However, so he did not mention in, in this other, in this tweet, or was it a tweet? It was a tweet, wasn't it? And said, he didn't say, um, you know, this isn't true about this stuff. Because if someone online came online and said, I have voice notes and text messages against you mm. that incriminate you and make you look like a horrendous person, and you didn't have them, I would be like, show them then. Show them, show, come do on, Do you mean you've them. never had that someone do that to you before? No, no. but like, it'd be like, show them, show, because even if that wasn't true or whatever, like, for that to be out on the internet, people are gonna think that, regardless of whether Jeffrey's telling the truth, there will be people who think Jeffrey was telling the truth. Even taking a step back though, I am kind of a little bit confused as to why Jeffrey's even involved in the first place. I think that Jeffrey has wanted to do something against James Charles for a long time. Yeah. And this is the way he could, and this is like the excuse to kind of do it. Because like I said, I think he does have things with James Charles, but he couldn't really let it out for reasons or whatever. Yeah. But and I think actually, since all the videos surfaced, I reckon every single one of them lawyered up. And then all the lawyers were like, no more, stop doing yeah. everything, yeah. stop it now. But I also think James has probably got stuff on Jeffrey. I feel like they've all got stuff Oh, each other. And like, you know, I'm, I am a Jeffrey fan and I have loved him for a long time, but he's not obviously got a squeaky clean past and I know he's gone past it, but I bet there's still more stuff that we don't know about. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't be, if like, as I always say, what, who you are online is maybe at absolute most about 30% of your entire being as a yeah. human. Every single person has stuff behind closed doors that they think or say. It's I, just whether you're gonna act, A, act on that, be marginalize anyone or see, you know, if you can be like, actually, that's ridiculous of me. Let me reassess myself, yeah. which is what a sensible person does. But when you're at the top of your game and you hire everyone around you, they're not gonna go against you because yeah. you literally control yeah. their entire life. And this is what, like, I feel like a lot of these people are literally just surrounded by yes people, like all the time. Absolutely. And, I'm sorry, but James needs to get better friends. Gabriel yeah. and, uh, Gabriel and Nikita both completely monetized on that and capitalized on Absolutely. it. By, by, especially Nikita saying what really happened and then did a whole video where she just promoted her own brand, really, and didn't just, and it was like, you're supposed to be his friend. Uh, yeah. And you're, you're capitalizing on this. And it's just weird. Like if ever, anything horrendous happened to me and then you made a video about it, I would like, buy bit. Yeah, so uh, absolutely. Yeah, like, like I would definitely not keep you in my contact list. So I'd be like, yeah. block, delete, like, clearly, goodbye, I'm hurt. I'm like, uh. I just, I just think, I feel like Gable got involved the same way Jeffrey got involved. Both of them should have just not done anything. I feel like they were, they were both kind it's of. It's really weird, like the fact that, the, Everyone seems to be sticking their nose in. Makes me kind of feel like maybe this was like a planned PR stunt oh God, at some point. Can you, know, you cause, imagine? Because it literally is like exactly one year after the drama getting 1.0 yeah. last year. So it was maybe like, are we gonna see, what's gonna happen next year on the season of Beauty Gurus yeah. worldwide? That would be exciting. It is crazy. And so, I mean, all in all, I think this whole thing has been completely like blown out of proportion. I don't think James Charles is a predator. I think, yeah, he's probably persuaded, maybe been maybe a little bit too much to some boys to be like, oh, stay with me, stay with me, whatever. I don't think it's been this cut case of just, I've always been respectful, bye. Like, I, there, there probably has been incidents. Absolutely, but I also really, really think that pe everyone knows someone like James Charles. Charles, if you are an LGBT person. Mm. Everyone knows, magical Trevor, <laughs> because there is a fetishism when you are growing up about like, oh, your straight friend that you really wanna have yeah. or whatever. Everyone has had that experience. Now, I can't imagine doing that at 18 yeah. and also being yeah, like so one of the most famous kids in the world with so much money, yeah. so much clout. And yeah. not only that, not only now is it like, um, it's a different world now than it was when I was 18. Even if you were like of an alternative sexuality or lifestyle when I was 18, so this is 12 years ago nearly, it still wasn't like everyone wanted to know you because you're that way. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, I imagine that there are boys that are, you know, even a, possibly a little bit bi-curious approaching James, sliding yeah, into yeah, the DMs, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Because there are going to be people that use you. There just yeah. are. And I can't imagine what it must be like to be his age and have so much of a following. And like, you must constantly get people trying to clout chase. Absolutely. Literally, like I cannot imagine what it must be like to have that many people and someone new comes into the scene. And the first thing I'd probably think about was like, does this person actually want to be with me? Or does this person and just want to be seen with me. And like, then each time that happens, it must exacerbate the insecurity further. Yeah. If anyone has been on the dating game, you know you put your best foot forward, you want to show off everything that you have that's really good yeah. because no one wants to be like, these are my horrible stretch marks, look at the lovely scars, mm, don't you love me? <laughs> Nobody does, that does not happen, I don't care what kind of person you are. If we look at birds, for example, birds of paradise, they're always like, let me clean my little nest, let me get all the best feathers out, ignore this little bumbling bee over here and just be like, mm, feathers, bee. lovely, come into my nest. 
Everyone does this. The act of courtship is putting your best foot forward. So I can completely understand from a youthful point of view that you are like, that's all he's known. All he is, he, he, when did he get famous? 15? I can't imagine having that situation. Yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine having it now. I think I, the point with power and money is it exacerbates all your negative yeah. qualities. It just does. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the when you are that young and you haven't understood risk and reward completely because Science time, your frontal lobe hasn't quite set into adulthood until you're between 26 and 28. Yeah. True. That's a big deal. Like, I'm only technically an adult now. Really? And you're yeah, 50. How <laughs> dare you? No, but like, th the thing is with him, as I feel like with the whole bullying of other people, and he goes about how people bullied him. Like, I know there's an there's a English makeup guy, he's really young, he's called Rubin. Rubin? And he's like 14 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. And like, oh, and like, I remember this. Last year, when he went to his meetup, and he was 13 at the time, he like pretended that the meetup was for him. And he's a 13 year old kid, but James like blasted him on the internet and all of us all wants yeah. to go and attack him. I'm like, he's a 13 year old child, like he's 13 and you're attacking, a th like, I don't care what this person does to you. If someone's 13, you do not post them online and make statements and crap about how they're like using, you know, pretending your followers are theirs, whatever. Like, he's a 13 year old kid. On the other hand, if you imagine that they were both in high school still, so James was what, it was last year. How old is James now, 20? 20, 19, yeah. 20. So imagine he was 18 at the very end of college in the UK. Like, let's say I've done my A-levels and I've painted this lovely picture and I've put it on the wall and then some little kid is like taking pictures with your picture being like, look what I've done, everyone. You would get frustrated and be a bit like, <coughs> But I think James hasn't gotten to that age yet where he thinks before he speaks. Yeah, oh my God, he tweet and delete. This tweet like and delete. That is another part of cancel culture because everyone is like. <laughs> but even Jeffree Star does that. Oh yeah, he he's the queen the of tweet and delete. Yeah. And he needs he he needs to calm down. He's at an age now where like it's, it's, not cute. it's harder for him to get away with it because of his age. I want to say that it is, but like he seems to be the corpse that keeps on giving because he has never really suffered. I don't know what it would take if there ever could be a, p a point of cancel culture somehow affecting Jeffrey, I don't know how, what it would need to, d to be to topple his career. Yeah. Not that I'm saying that should ever happen because I think the whole concept of cancel culture and wanting to see people fail yeah. is horrid, actually. I think, I think it highlights a very negative part of the human psyche, which is, you're doing better than me and I don't like that. I think what it is, I think, Jeffrey's very clever about when he does slightly problematic things because he does slightly problematic things against people who are already Problematic. <laughs> Problematic. Or people who are more villainized than him. So yes. I feel like sometimes it doesn't look as bad on him because he doesn't, like towards James Charles who did this stuff, like, although yes, some of the stuff he said was horrendous, like it almost became less, less impactful because it was against someone who everybody wanted to cancel in the first place. Highlighting of this kind of thing where people jump on the bandwagon to cancel someone. It's mm -hmm. almost like, I love being offended. Let's yeah. all get offended. Yeah. But it's so, it's not meaningful offense. It's not offense that changes your life. It's literally it's, something that's like, I, oh, it's gone 10 days later. I thought was funny. It was so quick to see how people, as soon as James made his video, it was switched again. It was Absolutely. Instantly, and so many people were like, oh, we had your back. We believed you all the time. When they were the ones tweeting, die, die, die you're horrendous, die, you're die, like a pedophile. Wait. When can we stuff. cancel him? Yeah, yeah. it was. Like, but to be honest, I think as well, this went so big because so many people for a long time have wanted to take him down. Uh, yeah. It, he's think... been someone who people have constantly wanted to get rid of for a long time. Unfortunately, James Charles's ego that kind is, yeah. of is yeah. central to all of this because if he was like a sweet little innocent kid, I highly doubt it would be it would have been as aggressive as it is because you yeah. kind of feel protective over sweet, innocent people. But as I say, there is something like also, I don't know, there's something jarring about even his Coachella like experiences, the fact that he was like, because the whole thing started with sugar, pear, hair, vitamins, yeah. right? So it kind of feels like instead of you saying, oh, I desperately need event staff for this, you could have just gone home. He was too concerned about like just trying to be at Coachella and have fun there rather yeah. than actually thinking practical about Which the whole in thing. itself feels a bit clout chasing. And also he was there the week, I know he had that guy with him, but he was there the weekend before. It wasn't like it was a thing that he missed out on. Yeah, if you were gonna sign away your best friendship that you've had for several years, you would consider maybe I should just, you know, this comes around every year. And he had already been there. So it's not like it was a thing that he would suddenly miss out on. I can understand being young and, young and like YOLO and like you really want to experience the party. Nobody wants to leave the party, but like the dumb sometimes just don't go to the party. The dumb thing about it is he knew that anyone can get the VIP tickets, like anyone can get it. So why would you not bring security of your own? It um, feels like there's lots of information left out of that. And I wonder yeah. if anyone even has any receipts relating to that. And the thing is like, I feel like it got to a stage where they were all going at each other and 
it was literally getting to a lose-lose situation. If Jeffrey Star came up with one thing, James would say another thing, and then Jeffrey would look bad, and then he would look bad. And it just kind of, it just, I feel like they all just knew that this was just going to keep going on and on and on and back and forward and it was just going to over. Someone above them must have been like, you guys must stop. You can tell from the way that all of these people talk about their scandals, it's if it's kind of like, you know, like a, like a tattoo or something. Like it's like, oh, well, I've had three this year, so yes. I am blah, la, 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 la. Like they're kind of in a weird way, sort of proud of the scandal. I feel like it's a very American LA sort of thing to do this whole make videos about each other, attacking each oh, other. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's some people who do it here, but I've never really seen people do that in the UK. Like, I feel like it's a, it's a very, like we have our own sort of drama things, but I don't feel like it's at the same level of the US. There is only that. one person I can think of that is at the same level as those on the US. And that, ironically, that person now is canceled themselves. They created an entire channel about council culture Cancel culture? You're talking about John Kakean. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, with John Kakean, it was it was very much like I feel like he was he thought he was unstoppable. Yes. And absolutely. it got to a stage where it was just he just started lying to himself, and he lied so much that he sort of forgot what his lies were. He to begin is pathological, with. and it is a really weird situation with him because he kind of started the cancel culture counter counter yeah, beauty was... guru movement, and then tried to become one, and that's when people were like, this is quite clearly jarringly. Incorrect. Yeah, it was weird because I feel like with him as well, he was one of the first because it was like him and like Saunders Kennedy was oh, one yeah. from like ages ago. I feel like it's got to a stage now where it's just become I don't really care what I'm reporting. Like a lot of the, a lot of them now will just take people's Snapchats or Instagrams and just put it into a video but and then also, monetize yeah, it. There's no there's not even any real so you attacked me. There's not any real kind of like substance to it. It's literally like, here's this video. And they all like steal from each other. Yes. They all go against each other. And it's really rare to see like any of them really get on. But also it is due, to, I really honestly believe it is also due to the rising clickbait. When you first started the drama channels or when the drama channel first sort of started, I want to say it was around sort of like 2016, 17. Yeah, it was about, yeah, when they started. Like yeah. Early-ish, that kind of time. It, they didn't really have to do clickbaity things because it was literally like- It was a new thing. It was new yeah. and they were covering real like in a way it's kind of like digital investigative journalism yeah in sort of like a broad stroke of that somehow really exciting some of the videos i remember were really quite exotic and exciting exotic. like jeffrey's jeffrey's racism scandal that was probably one of the biggest like first breaking things of yeah, like yeah. everyone's covering that now it literally is just like woman goes on instagram and cries and it's like let me talk about five dollar shave club or whatever the hell and then it's like at the end there's just this small Snapchat story of someone going, oh, my husband, yeah. for a second. It's well, like, well, that's it, not content. The drama channels now are so desperate for, because they see it's money and they, they don't. Drama. And the thing is, it's got to a stage now where they, just, they literally report on the most minuscule of things. And, but like, they make it like, oh my God, can you imagine that this happened? Yeah, like it's it's literally to say to where it's insane. I've, I've got rid of most of them now. I don't really pay attention to yeah, it. Yeah, I only really pay attention when like drama hits. But that is unfortunately a weird cycle of the internet is that people get bored of stuff. Yeah. And if you're not having a scandal, that you, you don't have drama content. So they're kind of like self-feeding, yeah. if you know what I mean. Like yeah. the more scandals, the more people are going to make drama videos about you, the more people are going to come over to your channel to, real, to read or investigate you. So your views will go up, yeah. the T channel's views will go up. But then if you're not being canceled, you might end up irrelevant and watch worst. What's worse? Gable Zamora benefits so amazingly from what happened last year. Absolutely. He looked like a monster when it all came out, but then he came up to be like on, on top of anyone. I feel like drama channels are definitely going to be on their way out, out way out now. I feel like this Oh is yeah, yeah, because... yeah, 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 yeah. Unless something new changes the game in some way, yeah. like when drama channels started, because people are just a bit like, if you're constantly having clickbait in your face, eventually you just don't pay attention because Do you're you like, that's so that's like... Un unacceptable. Do you think this drama channels for like other niches on YouTube? Absolutely not. not. Do you reckon there's a gaming it. drama channel? So yes, there is like drama in like the gaming community because you said that. Like, oh, so right. there's, a, there's a guy called Pro Jared who actually, oh, actually it's actually, literally right. the, the yeah. same time as the, J the James Charles thing happened. Apparently he had like had an affair and he was sending his like nudes to like underage girls. And obviously James Charles kind of like overstepped it. But that sounds Buried so it. much more predatory than what James Charles was doing. Yeah. But no one was really reporting on it. I mean, there was a couple with the Gamer from Mars that I've watched for a while. He does it. Um, he kind of covered it. And then obviously with the whole PewDiePie stuff when he, he's had quite a lot of scandals. Yeah. So there are, there true. are kind of drama things that happens outside, but like I never see it as much outside of like the beauty community. Yeah. Yeah, really. it seems to be very much centered into their world. Uh. Oh, hashtag mask. Um, <laughs> so like, I don't know if, 
it is a thing outside majorly, and maybe we just don't know about it because we don't follow people. Well, considering that um, PewDiePie has, has actually had several scandals, and I even actually remember one of them for a word that he used that shouldn't be uttered. Yeah. Um, he is the most subscribed person on YouTube. Yeah. So clearly it's not harming him. Yeah. However, James Charles literally had something leak. One person made a video about him. Granted, it was 40 minutes long and from mum of YouTube. And he lost, how many was it in the end? Three? Almost three two, million, yeah. It was really, something like that? Yeah. That is unbelievable. So like, what's your view on old tweets coming out because obviously when we were in school Twitter wasn't a thing yeah like we were kind of like the the end of like the kind of generation where gag of the millennial gag of the millennial where we we just left as it started to get large yeah because like Twitter didn't get big until like 2011 I want to say and I'm still not even really that big on Twitter anyway I mean I tweet maybe once or twice a week like I'm not a hot button tweeter like yeah. you are but like but like, when it comes to like old stuff though like because we were I mean, the amount of shit that we probably would have tweeted and stuff when we were in school oh, because our, okay so we were apart from a generation where time was very different yes, like absolutely. things were very because we, we spoke about because well you were on a YouTube channel called five awesome trannies and absolutely like, like, and that word now I would consider a slur if anyone said to it yeah said but that was me. like th the, that word was so normalized back when we were in school like it was a normal thing you, people say it on TV, it used to be Southern Sex and City, Little Britain, all these like shows that would just openly say it. When we were growing up, it was, I have a lot of like leftover internalized hangups because of the culture that we grew up in. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in Brighton, which is meant to be like gay capital of the UK, but it is also rife with homophobia yeah. all the time. And I remember even like trying to fit in by saying hurtful things to people because if you weren't with them, you were against them. Yeah. And like, as a mechanism of survival, you have to be in a group of number of people. Yeah. And that's really problematic that I don't feel exists now because no. with the whole social justice warrior type movement, I do think it's both good and bad. And that's a very centralist opinion, but it is necessary to call people out on their actions, but also to accept that times are changing. Yeah. We, we was talking about Kevin Hart a little while ago and about how he was tweeting homophobic stuff back yeah. in the day. And see, I am for the thing of like, yes, things were a long time ago. Apologize for what you did if it's come out. Just be like, look, I was, you know, I, I was a bit of an idiot back then. You know, things were different and I apologize. But what was different with him is he refused to acknowledge what he said was wrong. And so he refused to apologize. And the, that's what annoyed me because it was like, you cannot say all this homophobic stuff and then refuse to apologize in the future for it because that just makes you look like you still agree with what you said. When you make a mistake like that so publicly and you're a celebrity, I believe that you have to not repetitively apologize, but you have to, you can't just be like, I've apologized, we move on. You have to be like, I'm still sorry for what I've said. Yeah. I'm not, I was sorry and now yeah. I've moved on and it's fine because to some people it's not fine. I am more than happy. If you apologize and we can move on, it's fine. You're a different person, mm. it's fine. But like, cause I, you know, I'm, there'd, be, there'd be stupid shit that I would have said when I was a teenager in school, when I was 15 years old, that I would like, if I would never agree with now, I'd never say now. We all said stupid shit with our friends. We, and okay, so this is what annoys me. A lot of people who are quick to counsel someone are the people who'd be making those kind of jokes in private, but people don't know. It's that phrase, isn't it? People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones or whatever it's, that nonsense I'm sorry, is. but all these people who cancel people, you, you cannot tell me that every single one of them are squeaky clean. And it's just because no one knows what they've been doing. Because everyone at some point is battling that monster yeah. in their head that's like, wants you to be a nasty person because everyone has had that bad day where you're like, yeah. you get those intrusive thoughts like, I should push the baby off the cliff. I just think if, someone, if someone's old tweet comes up, you can look at it and be like, okay, that's offensive, I don't agree with what other says, and then think, you know, this is from 2012, look at the person, look at what they've done since then, look at the things they've been doing, and think, have they actually changed? Like, and don't instantly be like, you're cancelled, be like, okay, they've let them speak up and address this, and then move on. I don't think you should be like, right, you said this back when you were 16, 17, that means yeah. you're a, a, a horrible person for life. Like, that's literally ridiculous. While I agree with that, I think there is also an aspect of who is saying the negative thing. Mm -hmm. Like, going back to a little bit, um, obviously, we joke about the darkness, which I actually watched from a ContraPoints video. I don't know if you watch ContraPoints. It's all about, like, where your humour comes from if you can be self-deprecating. Okay. And, like, if I was to go on Twitter and make a, a joke about transgendered people, 
It would be in bad taste, but I don't think you could see it as me hating those people. I think yeah. it would be like more of like a self-deprecating joke because in a way it is well, my darkness. Well, I've sure. suffered with that. For sure. If I... I went and insulted someone who had nothing to do with me yeah. and I'd never experienced anything and I have no business joking about that thing, that is when I feel like you can hold those people accountable for yeah. those words because that comes from a place of ignorance. It's not like self like struggle context is definitely a thing and I, for me like i you know That's i i, I make gay jokes and horrendous like i say you know i call my friends faggots i call myself faggot like there's lots of, like i use those kind of words all the time and between me and my friends like that's our thing it can like, be jarring for someone who's yeah. perhaps not a friend not in your friend circle but people in your friend circle are not going to be like you're cancelled for saying that yeah, like, i am going to write a blog and find snapchat history from yeah. seven years ago like, me and my housemate callum we 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 say the most horrendous things to each oh, other God, you're Vicious, vicious we, queens. We are horrible, literally vile to each other. But it's because we love each other and we have such a great friendship that we can do that kind of stuff. And people outside of our friendship group would be like that. And I think tying it kind of back to the whole James Charles thing was when he made that joke about, oh, I'm famous, I can do what I want with this guy. Yeah, that was he, out of so, context. Yeah, like, he should have not said that in, in, in yeah. public around people who have no idea what they're going on about. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. for him to be like, oh, well, you know, we knew that. People in that table who were in, your, in Tati's birthday party party or launch party did not know the joke so she will have to tell them the next day i'm sorry for what he said this is blah blah, blah. so you can't use that excuse of oh it's between us friends because you're with people who don't get it an in joke is yeah. you know inside the group yeah. of friends that you have if i was in a load of people and i started you know saying things to Callum that we would say to each other or like make jokes and they were like what the fuck and then obviously i'd be like what well, learn to is... read the room yeah exactly like, there is, context requires you to be in context as well yes for sure and i think that's that's crazy so I just think so back to the old tweeting stuff I think if you've got stuff from a long time ago apologize from it and move on don't just cancel someone because they said something stupid years and years and years ago because something tells me you aren't squeaky clean Absolutely. and just because you didn't put it on the internet doesn't mean all of a sudden you're better than them and also maybe you don't have as much of a following yeah. but it comes back to people in a sense they don't really enjoy when other people are too successful yeah. they enjoy pe like you enjoy your friends doing well and you enjoy like you enjoy watching someone but you really enjoy being able to say something like I watched them before they were famous yeah. now they're just so famous that yeah. I just don't care for them a bit like what I was just saying about uh, James Charles's ego because when you do eventually get power money, influence, you do change as a human being and that's not going to be the same as he was two years ago yeah, or sure. me two years ago. Yeah. Very, very different. You have to be humble. People don't like arrogance, cockiness and yeah. what is it? Conceited attitudes. Mm -hmm. And when you are a public figure, as I say, the public have made you and they can turn you off. Yeah. But is that perhaps a bit too dangerous? I feel because he's young, he's not thinking about the wider frame. Oh yeah. He just instantly thinks so. of like a little kind of bubble and then, oh, this is how everyone knows, this is how everyone thinks, this is how everyone is, when well, actually no. It's like, it's like if I was to go down the street in some places where I've grew up from and just make out with a man on the street and expect everyone to be fine with it. Like you have to, you have to know your surroundings. You have to know everything about like, you know, because if I was to do that, I'd get heckled on the street. Yeah. Uh, like I'd yeah, probably, yeah, I'd yeah, probably yeah, get heckled yeah. in London, to be honest. Yeah. But like, I remember a little while ago, he had people annoyed because he was like liking and like replying to like porn. And this thing, because when, when you reply to someone on Twitter, if you're not following them, sometimes it comes up saying this person, because the amount of tweets I get from my friends, from people I don't know, like, because they've replied to them. And so sometimes porn were, were appearing in like the, his followers' feeds and they're kids. And yeah. it's like, and he was like, oh, I can do what I want. It's mine. It's up to me. And like, yeah, but you can't. Like, you know your audience. You know your audience as kids. And you have to take into consideration, like, yeah, if you want to like that stuff, have a private Twitter. You're at a size now where you can't just do what you want and be like, well, it's my thing. I can do what I want. Like, no, you, you have so many young people following you. You have to be considerate about all of these people. I think also this goes back to the weird thing that I was feeling earlier about Coachella. His outfits, I feel like are way too revealing for yeah. his age group. Yeah. Let's just estimate that his average age viewer is between 12 and 14. Mm is not acceptable. Yeah. It really isn't. The sexualization of children is bad enough with how quick and easy it is to be accessing the most hardcore explicit things on a thing, you know, in your hand at all times. Yeah. It's, we're kind of entering this sort of never really traversed water of like, how are we impressioning our young people? It's very easy to lead them down those routes. Yeah. And I, I don't think that those sorts of outfits are appropriate for you, for young people. I just yeah. don't think they are. Okay. I think a lot of this attitude actually comes from the Jeffree Star effect, yeah. which is 
Jeffrey doesn't need anyone to be successful. He does not need businesses to promote him. He doesn't, like, he doesn't need anything. He's so successful on his own, where he can be so overtly One flaunting thing. on the internet about drugs, sex, all the stuff, and he can get away with it because like he, it's not like he needs brands to help him survive, but with people like James Charles and like other people, I'm not gonna name those people, but there's other people like have this persona, but it's gonna be detrimental to them because they need the brands, they need yeah. this, and the brands yeah. don't work with them. And I feel like with James Charles, a lot of it comes from, I can do what I want, well he can do it, so I can do it. Like, it's just that kind of attitude. Like when he was like, oh, it's Christmas day or something and all I wanna do is a nice dick to suck. Remember him tweeting something like that? And then it was like, that's something that Jeffree Star would say. Like that's, that's something that he would say. And I thought it was weird that you're saying that because that's not your audience. That's not who you should be like. It's not really appropriate. Yeah, and like, I feel like it's, the, it's that kind of thing. But this kind of goes back to the millennial argument that we like to make all the time. Jeffrey is a part of the millennial era, yeah. and I feel like we as millennials went through an aggressive backlash phase where we wanted to shock by saying yeah. revolting things yeah. without necessarily any malicious meaning behind it, but we just like to be able to say those words. Yeah. Millennials are on average very angry, and we have the right to be. Our whole world that we were brought up into has A, completely changed since we were kids, yeah. and also, we are now a detrimental. We are the worst off generation there has been. We're gonna be worse off than those after us, and we're worse off than those before us, through no fault of our own. So we have every right to be angry and aggressive. Yeah. And I feel like this has played into Jeffree Star's fame because there is one thing that Jeffree Star is amazing at, and that's being famous. He has made a whole career out of being famous, and he, he was one of the first to do anything that he That's does. That's what I mean. Like, he's literally the first person to be like a, a proper like guy in makeup who was seen by the masses, who was... You like, say this, but that's, that's not the case. I mean, we had Pete Burns in the 80s. Well, no, but I mean, we had like, I mean, like, Boy George, we had... No, 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 I'm not talking about that, but like, I'm talking about social media world. Oh, uh, he yeah. completely overtook it because it went into a, it, like, it became normal for... I feel like he was one of the main people that started the trend He's, of... He, that's what I mean. He is so good at being famous. There is something innately enigmatic about him. And I can't, I, like, without saying it's the X Factor, but you know what I mean? It's that kind of, there is something about him. He can make anything famous. Yeah. And he will just be famous. I don't know what could topple his empire. If yeah. there was any opportunity for that to happen, not that I'm saying it should. Do you see what I mean? Because he's just so good at being famous. He's an icon in every sense of the word, and icons aren't necessarily great role models. But he definitely was the first social media, one of the first famous social media people. Yeah. Um, public figures, the yeah. public figure of the millennial age. The gays are, are very bad for the whole cancelling thing. I think, like, we're definitely, it gets to a stage where, like, within the community, if there's someone's done something wrong, they instantly jump on. I feel like we're very catty, like gay Twitter becomes a horrendous place to be if you're <laughs> if you're in getting That's attacked. Awesome. Like yeah. the stuff that they were saying about James Charles was absolutely horrendous when it was coming up. From back in the day, it was always it was always kind of like it. I remember when I was on like a, a the gay collaboration channel a long time ago, there were fights between some of the people members and things. And then that kind of blew up into like not as big as it was like now and things, but back in the day, like it was kind of seen as like a big deal. And the amount of people that were like going on board between like me and other people. And that's crazy. And we're talking like 2011, 12-ish time. Yeah. The gays become very vicious online, which I really dislike. And they're so quick to jump on the bandwagon of cancelling. And I don't know what it is about our community. Ooh, well, I and think I becomes... might have a little bit of an insight into why it might be. Oh, okay. And I don't mean to tarnish everyone with this brush because this is also applies to me in a way. And I believe hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And I think that in a way of vin like villainizing someone else, in a sense you are vindicating yourself at the same time. That is kind of what I feel is very much in play there. So the faster you are to be like, and look at what you've done, the more glorious you look in comparison. Yeah. To want to be validated in every aspect of your life only comes from extremely hurt people that have been secure. And generally, like really broadly generally, the millennial generation in terms of LGBT growing up, what we were talking earlier about school when we said vicious things when we were kids, those things probably aren't as said now. They might be in certain pockets of society because they always are going to be, but it might not be as prevalent as it was when we were young. We've both been on YouTube since pretty much the very beginning. Yeah. And we've seen countless of things. You know, you've been on collaboration channels where things have gone a bit tits up. I don't think you can ever have a collaboration channel that doesn't end being tits it's up. Mental. I've never seen one just be like, 
and we all love each other and we're stopping. Yeah. That doesn't happen. And Happy ever after, no bitch. We just recently had Jeremy Kyle cancelled in the UK, which is basically like a drama show. Yes. And it's just, it's basically like an English version of Jerry Springer, all those kind of stuff. And it got to a stage where it was so dated, I find it weird that it was still on TV. I don't understand why it was still around. But this very much goes back to the offence like, I love being, it's like offence porn or something. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what it is. Like, I am so offended at this woman sleeping with her brother's husband, daughter's flower pot. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, and it's all that like, you did it, no, you did it. Oh, DNA is going to stay, blah, blah, What is it about us that people just love shit Drama, like they love drama. They always have done. But don't forget, even, it's not even a recent thing. I mean, look at all the royal family nonsense that's happened throughout the history yeah, of time. Yeah. Like, everyone loves to pretend that like, all these problems that we're facing now are new. They aren't new. They just never really hit the light the way as before. The perfect example I can think of is there was a tweet by some boomer comedian taking the piss out of selfies. And I was like, excuse me, have you ever been to a palace? All they have is giant portraits of themselves. The <laughs> selfie is not new. It's just yeah. accessed by everyone for the first time. Our technology is evolving faster than our ability to be social. Yeah. And I think, you know, back in the day when you say, you know, I don't have anything nice to say, so I'm not gonna say anything at all. Like that's a very lovely, wishy-washy thing to live by, but you're always gonna get curtain twitchers talking about Karen next door curtain and her twitches. uncut lawn. But it's just now, instead of that, it's like, oh, look at James Charles and his possibly predatory behavior. And someone goes, James Charles, predatory behavior, pedophile. Like it's yeah. just Chinese whispers that go insane. Well, the thing is, so I recently had someone, um, I won't name them, but someone who I was considered a friend. I wasn't really close to him. I liked to see him when he was coming about. So basically I, I looked on his Instagram and he was bad mouthing one of my friends. And I, I replied to him and I was just like, why have you said yeah. this? It was like, you just, just talk to him. Why would you do that? And then it had someone who follows me DM me saying that he has a like a private Twitter that had like a few hundred people on. And he was like slagging me off on this Twitter with screenshots of my things to him saying about how he, he hates having to pretend to be nice to people. I'm and sorry, being bitchy is not like a substitute it, for personality. And it was just, first of all, like, I'm gonna find out why would you be so stupid. Also, it was like, why would you try to publicly shame me for literally no reason to a few hundred people on your feed when there's literally no need? And it's this kind of like, why is public shaming become like the new I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to, like, what is it about public shaming that makes people feel so- I have you? the power to destroy you. Yeah, I think that's what it it's, is. It's a self-indulgent moment. But also, who has the energy? Like, I don't yeah. have the energy to be like, I'm gonna have a private Twitter where I talk crap about everyone yeah, I love. Like, 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 what a lonely- It was just person. like, why, why, why would you take something that doesn't even make me look bad, it made you look bad, and then shame me online saying how you have always pretended to like me and how, but at, the, at the end of his tweet, it was literally like, and as you say, Rowley, trot along, bitch. And it was just like, what are you doing? Like, you just make stuff look like a twat. Well, at least the trash talk itself out. Yeah, exactly. But it's this weird thing. It was just like, I've always been nice to you as well. Like, I've never once said anything mean about you because I didn't, like, I, you know, I, don't, I didn't actually care about you that much to say anything mean about you. Like, I reckon it goes back to this whole concept of like, I like you as long as you're not doing too much better than me. Yeah, I don't know. He was very, he was always very jealous about me and Callum uh, all instantly. the time about, now, about influencers, but who would get work because he wants to be like an influencer. And it was like, well, you can, you can, but like I being bitchy and trying to take everyone else down isn't going to get you there. And then now all he's done is got an enemy from someone who actually liked him for no re and who's hiring the rankings or whatever. So now it's like, if I ever was talking to someone about working with someone and You'd they were like, like why nah, don't, yeah, exactly. Like, now I'm they... not gonna include you in something because I know the kind of person you are when I would be able to help you out. It's like a weird, why would you it's make an joke. enemy of someone who could help you? It it's make frustrating any sense. as well, because I can imagine then it's like, who do I trust? I've had people trying to clout chase with me before who people aren't in my life, like old people I've either like, you know, been friends with and stuff. Oh, yeah. And who were clearly just trying to get numbers off me. And it, it's, Weird, it's so weird. Why would you pretend to like someone for that? I don't get it. Everyone wants to be that girl who marries the rich guy and doesn't have to work again. That is the ultimate form of clout chasing in a sense. Why would you ever want to be known because of someone else? If all of my success came because of Because it's better than not being known at all. It goes to show you the baggage that people carry with them because if you associate the people you know with how, how valid you are, 
that will never bring you happiness mm. in your life. If your yeah. happiness has to depend on external factors, those external factors will change. To me, it's just like, it's crazy that we live in a world now where- You have else. to second guess yourself yeah. when everyone talks to you. What the hell? Why? This, it's so, it's taking something lovely like a friendship and literally covering it in manure and throwing it at the yeah. walls and going, ah, <laughs> now I'm famous. Like it is weird that we, that, that everyone seems, to, everyone, everyone like kids these days now. Like I'm so glad that we didn't have this because the pressure on kids now to have an Instagram, to have a Twitter, like and, and you want to share it all with all your friends and stuff. And like, you're so concerned about how much interaction you're getting. When we were in school, we were taking photos and stuff, but like, we weren't putting them anywhere. They were maybe gone Bebo, maybe. Oh. The closest we ever really got to real shade or real things online was the top friends list. But that Everything was that the height had. of drama. Yeah. It's like, I, why am I in position four? I should be at least position three or but, two. But now all the kids are just like, you have to get this many likes, this many followers, this this filter, this thing. How do like, you feel about child influencers? It's, um, it's weird. It's very weird. Like that girl that does ASMR that she was, but she would like did this role play that she was a police woman arresting you That's and it was like weird. what that you are weird. 12 how is this allowed yeah, that is weird. absolute no 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 yeah. if hollywood has proved anything it's that child stars more often than not don't live a wonderful life shall yeah. we say yeah. let's paint a scenario shall we let's say we have a 12 year old beauty guru who gets really famous before 13 and says something utterly ridiculous because they are 13 years old and yeah. you might do and they are completely cancelled and have their whole name trashed around the internet you have destroyed that child's life yeah. and that is a child that, yeah. that the collective may have you know, influenced in that way. It might prevent them from getting normal jobs later in life. It might prevent them from making any sort of meaningful relationship. But also, how do they, how Who are the parents allowing this to happen? All these things really are how brand they, new. How do they go to school? When the Harry Potter films were being made when we were younger, they didn't, they couldn't go to school and be normal kids. In fact, I think kind of all three of, well, actually, only two of them have been really lucky because Rupert Grint has kind of faded into irrelevancy. We, we, I know within 10 years time, there's gonna be another wave of people being canceled for stuff they said now. We look back now, we were in 2005, six about things that are now considered horrendous. Like, but we all said before, like Little Britain, um, they would do blackface and it was a normal thing that you would see. Like, Even that was like quite recent yeah. considering like Come and Fly With Me was the one that was really problematic. Yeah, and that and was only like, Six years ago. More than that. Was it, really? it was like 2008. That's the thing, seeing, like, even like a lot of YouTubers when they first started, like would do blackface. And, oh, it, yeah. and when that happened, like it wasn't, people weren't crazed, meant, like <gasps> shocked by it. It was, yeah. an, it was still a normal thing, which seems horrendous now thinking back to it. Like how was that normal? And as we said about the T word, like that was like a normal thing that people would say against trans people that were just, it was a normal word. Like it didn't have any impact. You know, we look back now and think, Horrendous. What was? How was that allowed? Like, how was that normal? Like, normalized? But again, in 15 years' time, they're going to look at a lot of the stuff that we do now and think, what was happening then? Why yeah, were they doing absolutely. this? What that was monstrous. Why would they do that? Like, it, it it's a natural thing, and I'm really interested to see what happens then. We could literally sit here and talk about this for hours and hours and hours, Absolutely. but we know we have run on for a long time. Um, and I need some lunch. We want your feedback. Um, obviously, if you're st if you're still watching this video, because it's going to be a long one, comment down below, spaghetti and meatballs. Um, <laughs> we love a good medium. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> We're just trial running this. We're not too sure how the concept and the content and everything will go. It may evolve, um, it may die. Yep. We don't know yet. We don't know. So we're going to talk about lots of different topics. So please again comment down below um, some topics you might want us to discuss. We wanted to cover this drama because it has been very recent and it's very much like a thing about our generation. Absolutely. I feel like it's definitely to do with us. It's not that it directly affects us, but it really affects the way that we perceive the world. Yes. So, um, so we want to talk about more sort of like a lot more intense topics as well. We might do some fun things about like even just like I really want to do one about like old gay YouTubers and like people that, you know, back in like- Don't come for my brand. <laughs> no, but, like, I really want to do one about like people that we watched back in the day and how they edited the internet and how they- Yeah, how they everything. shaped the mind yeah. of us. Um, anyway guys, yeah, so comment down below anything you want us to do. Um, follow Luxera, there'll be links down below and hit the like button so really help me out. Um, share with your friends and yeah, just give us feedback because we're, we're trial running this and we- really We love you all lots and lots and yeah. lots. And that's the gag of the millennium. <laughs>